Hi, I'm Jeff Murphy and today we're going to talk about making selections using Adobe Photoshop. Um, we're also going to look at the quick mask mode as part of this to refine our selections. We will look at a layer mask and we'll look at the refine edge dialog box. Um, so if you've never made a selection before, don't worry, we'll start from the beginning and we'll move into all those things because in general you tend to use all the tools together to make any kind of complex selection. Now making selections is a big part of Photoshop. The more practice, um, the more you practice, the better your selections will be and the more you will look like a professional um, image maker or digital media artist or photographer. So it does take a little practice like anything in this field. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and throw my extra layers away from my title and give you a heads up of where we're headed with this. This actually is on its way to become Trike Strike Irish Ale, which is not a beer for kids. <laughs> it's a homage to the tricycle um, and biking in general. It was the last, I, I took these photographs sort of the last time Quinn took his tricycle out. He had already graduated up to a big bike. And so we took this out for a last spin. Um, thought it should be immortalized in beer. So I'm combining all my favorite things, art, beer, and biking, and my son, all in one thing. Okay, so it's headed there. You can see he's extracted from the background. Um, I needed some flexibility. I ended up scaling him up. I had to do a lot of stuff with Quinn. All right, and the first thing I should mention is that um, if you're making a selection, it's important that you plan ahead Making your selections will be much easier if your subject is isolated against a background that's neutral. So in this case, I have a light gray background. Now ideally, I could go in the studio, photograph him against um, a background that contrasts a lot with what he's wearing and um, his skin tone and that sort of thing. Um, in this case, it probably would have been easier if I dressed him in blue jeans because what's going to be problematic about this one is that his light pants um, really blend in quite well with the background. That's going to make it hard for Photoshop to find that edge, so I'm going to have to help Photoshop out with that quite a bit. Um, but if you plan ahead and you can shoot in a studio um, a background um, that contrasts well either in terms of tone or color will help you out quite a bit. So, so try that first. Now I understand a lot of people don't have access to a photographic studio and you know you're oftentimes shooting things in the real world like this. Like I needed Quinn out there on his bike having fun um, to really get the, the attitude I wanted coming through. So the studio wasn't really an option. All right, it, prov it provides a really good uh, demonstration file now because it's not perfect like a lot of things in the world. All right, so first of all, let's grab the let's grab the rectangular marquee. I do use this sometimes. Um, for example, let's say I, you know, I picked this situation out because Quinn loved this ramp and I'd love these repeating black icons or black bars. I thought they were pretty nice and graphic and I felt I could do something with them. Now what I did with them actually is I made <laughs> these um, black streaks around him that sort of terminate in this um, spike behind him uh, that sort of suggest motion. So they don't look anything like they started, but they were important um, in my initial thinking. And let's say I need another one of these bars right here where I feel like that's sort of, sort of um, blank. I could take this and by default, this is set to zero pixels for the feather. And what I want you to pay attention to is this feathering, because this is super important. If I grab this bar and I copy it, now notice it's Command C to copy and Command V to paste. It puts it on its own layer over here. And I can move it now. And I can scale it up with Command T. That's my transformation thing. and I could fit it in here pretty well. Now I'm just going to line up 
as best I can. Uh, this line here in the bar itself. But you know what? I'm not going to do a great job with it because I'm going to sh show you. I'm going to do this again here in a minute. Um, see that edge right here? I would have to either erase that or use my mask to get rid of that. Um, you know, I could just go all the way down to the bar, but that would be a huge pain in the butt. That's kind of a lot of editing. Um, what might be a better idea if I was doing something like that? I mean, the brick is going to have to go no matter what. I'm going to have to add a layer mask and get rid of the brick. But what would probably be a better... Um, oops, <laughs> missed my trash can there. Throw this away. What would be a better thing to do is put some feathering on here. This will give me a gradated edge. And then I can grab the same post. And you know what? I can even, if I want to, I can even transform my selection itself. You know, I have Command T to transform my actual pixels, but I can actually rotate my selection. Just go to the Select menu and Transform Selection. You get the same bounding box you get when you transform pixels. But this is actually just rotating my selection. It didn't change that bar at all. So now I can do copy and paste. And here I'm going to do Command C and Command V. So now it's on its own layer. I can double click it, call it bar. Now watch though the difference here. This one has a feather on it. See the edge? See how it's soft and gradated? That's actually a good thing. It'll help me blend this stuff together. If I, if I put this in here, and I, oops, and I shrink this, move it down. See how that blends so nicely? And the wall, the wall blends real well. And again, like, like I mentioned, I will need to erase this, and I need this guy bigger. So I will zoom out using Command minus, and I guess I'll zoom out some more so I can see both the top and the bottom. It'd be very helpful. All right, so without going too far into that, the feathering helps a lot. I'll still have to get rid of some things like, you know, I have that. Um, I need to get rid of this. I don't like that extra crack in the that line in the brick, and the brick needs to go. It'll never line up. And I still need to scale this up a bit more. So stick it here for now. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to this feathering option um, as you're working. It's super important to to notice. And a lot of people never look up here and it's always set at zero. And I ever, never, hardly ever use zero as my feather because you rarely have an edge that's that sharp in the world in a photograph. Hardly ever. All right, I threw that bar away because you, you saw where I'm headed with it. I'm not even going to end up using it. So that was really just for demonstration purposes. All right, let's try to select Quinn. Um, now, the easiest way to do that, I mean, I could take the lasso and put some feathering on him, and I could go around. That'd be a little tedious. Not going to do that. I have um, my magic wand, which is good for for um, areas of similar color and tone. So I can click on that. Now that'll work great on a shirt because it's a red shirt and I can hold down shift. First thing we should understand is you can press down the shift key and you could it move to this second icon, which is add to selection. Just look up here. When I hold down my shift key, it jumps to my second icon, add to selection. So I can hold down shift or I can click on that icon, either one, and that'll help you know, I can click on these areas that are not part of the selection yet and grab them. In fact, let's, again, blow this up. I always tell my students, can you blow it up? You'll do a lot better work if you enlarge things. So shift click, shift click, um, shift click at that little piece. Now, if I want to subtract from selection, see how it went into the little bell here? Option, my other modifier that I use with the selection tools. Now shift to add and option to subtract works with any one of these selection tools. Um, so option, click here, and that part goes away. Now, and I can also combine these tools. For example, I could switch to the lasso tool now, 
put a one pixel feather on that, and then add this little piece right here along his chin. Um, and add this little piece right here. So it's really up to me. Whatever I think is going to be um, the best tool for that little piece of the puzzle is what I will use. Here's the piece I'm missing. Shift and drag around that to add that little dot. Okay. Now I did most of this um, with my quick selection or my magic wand tool to get this shirt. Um, and again, that works best with similar colors. So if I tried to get like the pants or anything else, the magic wand is going to do an awful job. In fact, you know what I use the magic wand for most is when I do photograph something in the studio against a black background or a white background, you can select the background with your magic wand and then just go to select inverse to get the actual thing itself. So if you have a dark background or a white background, you can use the magic wand, click on the background, and then inverse that selection to get everything but the background. And it works great that way. So, or if you scan something on a scan bed, um, you know, you have white behind it or black behind it. Again, magic wand works great for selecting the background and then inverting that selection to get the real thing. All right, so here we have the shirt. We use the magic wand. If you ever do use the magic wand, for whatever reason, um, make sure that you refine that edge. So click on this little button here. You could even use the modifiers up here under the select menu. Notice that border, smooth, expand, contract, feather are all going to be under this refine edge box. It's right here again. There's three places to get to it. I can get it from the select menu. I can click on it right here. And there's a masking palette. Now you can see the reason it was so important that I click on that. Look at that nasty edge. That looks awful. If I just used that tool and did not refine my edge, I'd see all these chunky edges, the stair stepping, and it would look pretty awful. So make sure you click that refine edge box. And then I can, here, notice smooth, feather, contrast, shift edge are the same things that were in my select palette. I can smooth this edge a little bit. Um, and I could even feather it a hair. And I could shift my edge if I want to pull my edge in. I can do it there. All right. I'm going to feather this a little bit more. If I do anything with the shirt, it will be to change the color. Now, I like the way it matches the red, so I probably won't do that. But now that I've made the selection, I might as well finish it up and save it. So, say output to selection. And so now I have a nice selection of the shirt. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's say save selection and we'll call it red shirt. I could call it shirt, I suppose, but we'll just go with red shirt. All right. Now if I ever need that again, I can just go to my select and load selection and pick out red shirt, and there it is. All right, so I can save a selection, load a selection. It'll be saved as an alpha channel. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Now, you know what? Let's go back to the shirt since I've already gotten the shirt. Um, might as well start with that. And let's continue with that. In fact, let's go to here to my quick selection tool, which is what I use a lot. I use this quite a bit. And the way this works is you can just click in your selection and drag out. Notice it just got his head there. You can drag down here to his hand. I can follow along this bar. And grab this hand. I'm always starting in my selection and I'm mo moving out. And notice the default um, setting for this tool is the add to selection icon. So I can, you know, I can actually click in the areas to add them, but it's just really to make it quick, just drag out of what you already have. And now I'm gonna have to get rid of these parts, no biggie. We've already talked about um, the modifiers, shift to add to selection, and option to subtract. Now, since this is already set to shift to add, I can use option and come through here to get rid of some of these pieces. Now, again, look, it's going to do a horrible job. This is a really hard edge to find. Adobe Photoshop will have a hard time with its edge. It's like gray against gray, and it's a little blurred because he's moving really fast, and I wanted that 
part of this. I wanted him to look like he was moving, so I wanted the blur. Um, so probably, I can keep trying this. And you know, it'll, do, it'll do an okay job, but at some point it won't be able to find that edge. So I can keep trying to subtract this. That's doing okay. Oops. Option. I've got these areas here. I've got to subtract them. Subtract this one. It's going to do a horrible job with this handlebar. That's okay. I'll have to fix that stuff with the other, the other selection tools. Finally, the shoe. The rubber on the shoe is going to be hard too because it's white rubber. Actually, it's kind of light gray and it's a light gray ground. All right. So let's look at some of the other tools. So we've looked at the lasso here for a second. So let's go back to that because I use this quite a bit. Um, we could refine our selection with the lasso. First of all, blow everything up. Command plus or use the navigation window to blow it up. Um, or you can even use a magnifying tool to blow it up. But blow it up, and then we'll we'll have the second icon. We can either hold down the shift or click on add to selection with my lasso. And you draw complete circles around the areas that you want to add. All right. So let's see what else do we need here. We need the shoe. We can get a little bit. I'm going to show you something else that will work better on the shoe here in a minute. I'm just trying to get the bulk of this thing. We need this pant leg. Now, even I can't even see that where it changes right here. It's such a I, maybe this is piece of the pants. You know what? I'm just going to make it look like I think it ought to look, since there's really no edge there at all. All right, we need this piece here. It's missing a little chunk of um, this tube right here. So, with this, this is a straight line, isn't it? Right here, this is a straight line. So I'm going to show you another modifier. Um, so I'm adding the selection. I'm drawing already. If I hold down the Option key when I get to the top of that line, I can lift up my mouse or un unclick my mouse. In this case, actually, I'm using a, a tablet, so I'm lifting my pen off my tablet. It gives me a straight line. See that guy? Then I can click right down here and come around, and that gives me a straight line. So it's basically giving me the polygonal lasso tool by holding down the Option key as I'm drawing. You have to already be drawing for this to work. So try that. Make sure you try that. It's, it's super handy. You do it all the time. Alright, so let's say I've got most of the stuff that I want. Here's another situation where I would go ahead and use, so I'm drawing already, option key, click over there, come around here to the edge, other edge of the straight line, and I get the handlebar. All right. Oops, I can see I missed a piece here, another hard line. That piece of pants. And again, I have a feather of like one. Actually, I could probably use two on this one. Um, I can't tell you what you should always use for the feathering because it's dependent on the resolution of your file. If you have a big file, you just have to set this number a little higher. If you have a really small file, that number will be a little lower. Um, because it's dependent on obviously the resolution of your file and how much quality is already in your file. All right. Here's another cool thing about making selections that I use quite a bit, and that's called the quick mask. This little icon at the bottom, they, you know, I keep thinking they should move it up here in some future version of Photoshop since it works with these guys. But it's a quick mask, um, and it actually is going to change the mode we're working in. If you look up here, we're working in RGB right now. If I click here, it gives me a red mask. It says quick mask up here. And the quick mask is a temporary mask. Uh, all it's really doing is changing my selection. For example, I'm going to jump out of it again. So look at this edge right here of his foot. When I click on this, if I take my brush, because you're always using your brushes with your masking modes, and I put a little line through there, and then I go back and you can see that that's now been masked out of my selection. It is not part of my selection anymore where I drew that line. Cool, huh? So, of course, that's not what I want to do. The beauty of this is I can use white. I can use white to add to my selection. So white is adding to your selection. If you're painting with white, you're adding to your selection. And the beauty of this is 
I'm using a brush. Now I can get my brush options with my control key on a Macintosh and change my size. And I'm almost always keeping a brush with zero hardness. So it's a nice soft brush, which works great for this because, again, the feet are blurred and um, you know I need some edge, edge blur. So it's going to look very organic and natural if I do this correctly. All right, so I could go around this whole document in my quick mask mode. If I go a little bit too far, it's no biggie. Just switch to black. And I can fix this little right here. Again, I still have black, so I can fix this right here. Fix this right here. And if I need a smaller brush, I can use my brackets, my left bracket, to get a smaller, smaller brush and go in there and get like really good detail. And again, I can hit I need to, I see I need a little piece of white here that I missed so I need actual white brush to get the white object there we go all right so I can go through this whole document fix up little parts oh by the way X on your keyboards which is look here I'm hitting X on my keyboards which is between black and white set the X so I need black go in there like that all right, let's see how I'm doing on time. Okay, i got to pick this up a little bit. Don't want you guys sitting here forever. Um, all right, when I'm done with that, I need to make sure I click back in RGB mode. i still got a lot of editing to do. That's okay. I want to show you something else to make this a little bit harder or easier. Um, all right, last step to this process is what? I've already mentioned this. This is a review already. Get a selection tool again. I'm gonna whoever said refine edge is right. I'm gonna click this little refine edge button. And I can see my view on different like there's the same one I had for quick mask. Although this is actually I'm gonna have this generate a layer mask. Um, I'm gonna look at this on black because that makes it easiest for me to see my selection and where it's crappy. Now remember I got most of the selection with my um, my quick select tool. So it's a chunky again. If I blow this up, it's going to look a little chunky. And that's not cool. See, I'm missing some parts on the armpit. We'll fix that here. Um, so again, we should smooth this out of here. All right. The other thing is there's a lot of great um, videos on Adobe TV that you can watch that show you about this refined edge box and the, the newer masking features of Photoshop. Um, and they almost always use somebody in their hair. Um, you know, and it looks great, but um, and for the hair, this this will work great because it's really hard to 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 get all the hair. If I want to look at um, marching ants, you can see those that hair up there that we missed. It's always been a challenge for Photoshop. Now we're lucky; the hair is against the white ground, <laughs> so that helps a lot. Okay. So first of all. If you, the first thing my students want to do is click on the Show Radius button because it's at the top. And if you hit it right now, it's just going to show you nothing because we haven't adjusted the slider. And I'm not going to adjust the slider. Don't mess with the slider yet. This Radius thing, um, if we had made a crappy selection all the way through and we wanted Photoshop to find the edge of everything for us, then we would use this Radius slider. But um, I know that that Radius slider is not going to work very well because I've seen the edge of this pants is not a very easy edge to detect. So I know this, if I have Photoshop pick the radius for me, which is giving it a radius to look for the edge, it's not going to do a good job. And I already made a, you know, I spent some time using my um, quick mask tool and using all my selection tools to get a pretty good selection um, in most of this. Obviously, I would have spent more time if you all weren't watching. But if you spend a great deal of time making your selection, don't then tell Photoshop to do it for you. <laughs> It'll just work against you, so don't use this radius. Um, what I do want to, I want to paint my own radius on up here in the hair. So I'm going to paint my own radius on. And so in a second, you'll be able to see how this works. But watch, this is really cool. So this brush I have actually by default. And I'm going to paint outside his hair. And I just want to make my radius. This is just painting on a radius. And when I tell it, 
what radius I want to use, it'll start looking for edges within that radius. All right, so really all I'm doing is picking a big brush and I'm going around his hair and when it when I tell it what radius I want to use, see now I can click this little show radius thing and it'll show the radius I've told Photoshop to look for an edge. All right, so I'm not trying to paint the edge on. Photoshop is going to find the edge for me. I'm just telling it the area to look for an edge. That's what the brush is doing. So all around here, you know, I didn't spend any time doing that. Um, I could even try a shirt, like this armpit I forgot to do. Again, any area where there's good contrast, either color contrast, you know, color contrast is like um, red and cyan. Is there are complements or additive complements, so it's a good good color contrast. Um, Photoshop will do a great job. Now, <clears throat> just so here I missed a piece of the pants. Like, watch if I try to do it here. Look at it's it's not going to do a great job. <laughs> so I get one undo with this. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fix that later on. But right here. Do a good job. The other things, remember, I have a shift edge option here. I can shrink my edge a little bit, but if I shrink it too low, the hair is going to start to disappear. All right, so so I'm going to be a little careful with that. You know, I ended up taking that piece of hair off. It was just a stray. I didn't didn't really help my composition or anything. He ended up coming off, so it was helpful to, for me to shift the edge down and basically pull that selection in. All right. So again, the radius thing and smart radius works really well. If you just do use the quick selection tool and you don't do any of the, the um, editing on your own with the selection. Um, but in this case, I actually made a really good selection of the pants because those were the problematic areas. And so I'm not going to use this radius slider. I am going to use these guys here, though. All right, the smooth and the feather. Um, can feather right here too. Now when I'm done with this, what I want to do is output this. I can go back to output it to my selection if I want and I could save that selection again or in this case this whole document is going to be probably have a whole different background. Well it does so I'll say new layer with a layer mask which will give me even further um, for the options. I can click this remove settings if I do this a lot now here's what I have. My new document now. You see I have a new layer with Quinn, just Quinn, and I have a background. So I could I could scale Quinn up now. You know, he's I was probably I'm gonna end up putting him against a solid background, but I can do all sorts of things with him. Let's see, solid background, Jeff. <laughs> solid background. <laughs> like let's say I put him against a red background. Now I can scale him and do whatever. Okay, don't really need that. Um, and most importantly, he's got a layer mask now, which is different from quick mask. Remember, quick mask is temporary. It's just used for making your selections. A layer mask, I have another video about that because layer masks are like the most important thing for um, young Photoshop users to understand. But with a layer mask, see here where we're missing that piece of pants? No problem. I can click on the layer mask. I can click on my brush tool. I can click on white. And I can bring that back in. Because remember, the white would add to my selection, or in this case, actually bring my, my picture back. And again, I can make a bigger brush. Sometimes I actually like to go a little bit further because I can't really see that edge. It's so subtle. I sort of have to make it up on my own. So now I can switch back to black and decide how I want that thing to look. All right. I think we're done here. We have isolated Quinn is on his way to a trike strike.